Boys and gents, and welcome to CG Reaction. And like always, we are reacting to Salmonella Academy video. South Sudan, the world's newest country. I already reacted to quite a few Sam videos already, and I created a playlist for it. So if you haven't seen them, check out the cards for the playlist. Uh, check out the end cards. Uh, you know, uh, there's a link in the description with all of my videos. If you haven't seen it, check them out. And if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. And you know, that way I know which type of videos to react to more, and you'll be supporting this channel, I guess. So yeah, South Sudan. I didn't know there was two Sudans. I know there's a Sudan, uh, you know, bordering Egypt. <clears throat> I know that because you know, long ago I had a fascination with pyramids. Uh, so I learned that even though uh, great pyramids and historical pyramids, uh, you know, like iconic pyramids are in Egypt, <coughs> most uh, pyramids are in Sudan, like, I don't know, 200 or 300 or so. So I know Sudan is bordering Egypt. Uh, I think, you know, it's mostly, you know, Islamic uh, country, I guess, most population are Muslims. But that's it. I didn't know there was two Sudans. But all right. And since Sam is covering this, I'm pretty sure there's going to be really weird facts about it, and it's just going to be awesome. So let's watch it. Hey kids. Today I'm going to talk about South Sudan. It's the newest country in the world, becoming fully independent just in 2011. So I'm going to explain why the state came into Damn, being and what it's like new. there today. So to understand why South Sudan exists, you kind of have to know a bit about Sudan as a whole. So before 1956, Sudan was under the joint control of Egypt and Britain. At the end of 1955, they gave a declaration of independence and became their own thing. The independence movement, however, was led by this guy, Ismail Al-Azari, and he was was like, hey everybody, we are an Arab-oriented Muslim nation. But then like 8 million Sudanese black people were like, whoa now, hold your camels, Ishmael. Us Africans, we ain't all about your Allah. He was like, yeah, well who cares? Oh, I see. So they got into a civil war between the primarily Arab Muslim North and the traditionally oriented African South. That went on for six I mean, it is in the Africa, but this is like always the case, isn't it? You know, religion wars again. You know, the people are like, you know, we don't, we don't want anything to do with your religion. They're like, this religion defines this country, and just see what war starts. 16 years until finally the North's like, all right, fine, you can do your thing. Like you're still part of Sudan, but you can govern yourself for the most part. We'll take our falafels elsewhere. And that peace treaty lasted 11 years from 1972 to 1983. Eventually the South was like, well, things aren't that bad now, but the Arabs still technically control us, so it could get worse. And I'm not in the mood for any Sharia law anytime soon, so we should probably go back to fighting. So then there was another civil war, which was basically a continuation of the first one. And Okay, there must be a trigger for that, right? I mean, they can't just like one day, you know what we, we want to fight against, screw the peace talks. I'm pretty sure there must be some kind of trigger. Because if there wasn't, that's just one of the most, you know, twitchiest things you can do. Like, oh no, oh no, this, this sounds like peace, but they're going to attack us again, so let's attack them first or something like that. And that ran on from 1983 all the way to 2005, when finally the two sides made a comprehensive peace agreement, which led to South Sudan becoming totally self-governing in 2006. Then after five more years of fiddling around with paperwork, South Sudan became a fully-fledged independent nation in 2011. So notice how there were two civil wars before the South gained independence. I guess you could say, two coups make a Sudan. So now that they finally got what they want, it must be great to that was a hidden message for Americans, I guess. You know, you need two civil wars for the South to, you know, get the, your own country, I guess. Or maybe that's how I saw it. <laughs> Man, I didn't know there was two Su Sudans. Apparently there is. It's, you know, led by, you know, religious uh, differences, I guess. Well, one type of people are, we are just Africans, we are not Islamic. And, you know, others like, you know, we are Islamic. So I guess, you know, divide was even, you know, inevitable. So let's watch this one to live in South Sudan now, right? No, no, not really. 
It's actually just about the worst place you could ever choose to live in. Seriously, if somebody gave me the choice of moving to South Sudan or living the rest of my life with my dick inside an anthill, I'd be slathering on the honey before they even finish their sentence. Let me talk about a few reasons South Sudan sucks so bad. First, let me talk about ethnic groups. Europe, as we all know, contains a lot of ethnic groups. Scots, Serbs, Slovaks, Slovenes, Spaniards, Swedes. And those are just the big ones that start with S. There's like a hundred others. The same is true with Africa. I mean, yeah, talking about dense people, um, not dense, you know, dense packed people. Europe is really densely packed, isn't it? All type of, you know, all type of ethnic groups, uh, you know, tons of countries. And, you know, knowing how big continents are like Africa, Europe is not that big compared to that. And having that much, you know, different type of people is just ridiculous. But at the same time, it's also awesome. I mean, I, I, I haven't been to Europe. I've seen lots of places in, you know, photos and things like that. But while playing Euro Truck Simulator, as as I was crossing countries, obviously it's not accurate, but sometimes some features that game does capture it just right. So when you come to Switzerland, you can feel things are changing. You go to Italy, things are completely different. You go to Germany, it's different. It's just awesome, man. Traveling Europe, you know, with a car, I mean, obviously they are all part of European Union, so you can just travel there without worrying much. So it's just awesome. It's just, It would be awesome road trip. I mean, Top Gear basically did that years ago. Lots of road trips around Europe, and that's an episode, I guess. There are thousands of localized ethnic groups sprinkled all over the continent, whether or not you could tell from first glance. As such, South Sudan is home to a bunch of different peoples, each with their own languages and customs. And these groups have a long history of disagreeing with each other, like they don't get along much. So that's one thing. Second, remember how South Sudan was at war with the North for basically all of the past half a century? Well, as a result, the whole place is pretty geared for war and not much else. Their infrastructure is abysmal and they've got all these guns just lying around waiting to be shot at something. Third, South Sudan has a bunch of oil reserves in different locations around the nation, and we all know how much people like oil, everybody wants control of whatever wells they can get. So between these three things, the whole place is basically one big whirlpool of chaos. At any given time, the South Sudan government is at war with at least seven different armed groups from around the country, each of which is also at war with the other groups. And if that's not enough of a shitstorm, the government ended up basically splitting in two in 2013. This is what happened. So you've got the president, his name is Salva Kiir, and yes, he does actually wear a hat like this, it was a gift from George Bush, true story. And then the vice president, his name is Reek Makar. I'm probably saying those wrong, but it's fine, they don't have internet in South Sudan, so nobody can call me out here. So anyway, Salva Kiir, he's very aware of the fact that the country's in a very precarious spot at the moment, so he starts taking greater control of the government and the military, dismissing old people and installing those that he sees fit. And so Reek Makar, he's like, well gee whiz, Salva Kiir, for someone who calls himself a president, that's pretty dictatory of you. Well, for someone who calls himself the vice president, that's pretty annoying asshole of you. Sir, all I'm saying is, you know, I'm getting pretty sick of you and that gay hat of yours. I, I'm not wearing a hat. As president of South Sudan, I order you to put on a hat. Yeah, see? That hat's gay. You're wearing the exact same hat. Alright, fuck you, you're out of a job. Wait, what? Yep, you and your whole cabinet, get out. Okay, I made up the part about the hat, but the rest of that is true. Also, I- Wait a minute, president can't fire vice president? What the hell, man? I'm pretty sure you, you can't. Once you elect it, you can't just fire vice president. What the hell is this? I should mention that Kier and Makar come from two different ethnic groups. See, Kier is a Dinka, whereas Makar is a newer, which only heightened the tensions between the two. So after Makar got the boot, he ended up taking a chunk of the military with him, most of which were newers like him. And they start- See, that's the thing. I mean, you want to be a separate nation. You got that. You should have had a long-term plan, like once we have the country, what's, what are we going to do? What's the economical plans going forward? If you don't have that, it's going to be chaos, obviously. And that's what basically happened here. Damn, I didn't know it was that bad there. It would be so effed up living there, man started a rebellion against Kier's government. This is known as the South Sudan Civil War, and it's still going on to this day. So yeah, to sum it up, if you looked up clusterfuck in the dictionary, well, you wouldn't find anything because clusterfuck isn't a real word. But if it was, there would probably be a picture of South Sudan next to it. Seriously, this place makes Hotel Rwanda look like Hotel California. And throughout it all, there's still a bunch of hardworking individuals just trying to make a living. Farming uh. or herding or whatever. But the constant warfare makes it so the average person has to live in virtually Stone Age conditions. Which sucks, but, you know, what can you do? So that's the story of the world's newest nation, kids. Till next time, I'm Salmonella, and thank you for watching. Aw, oh, that's just after, but like, every day, like,
regular people getting screwed over and I can't even believe what kind of hell would they would be going through man all those different type of factions basically you know fighting each other even government is unstable you know they don't know what to do for their economy because all they did was you know rebel and try to become their na own nation that's just after up man when you really think about it I didn't know South Sudan existed, especially that it was this effed up there. It's, you know, sometimes I think, you know, some countries, you know, countries, even in Asia and Africa, where, so, you know, some countries have potential, but there is no real guideline there, you know, like what you're going to do, how you're going to do it. I think, that, you know, some kind of, there should be some kind of global effort to help certain countries to go up. Not just to, you know, for a charity purpose, just to, you know, bring up entire world's economy. Because the more, the more countries out there are more productive, the more entire world benefits. So I think there are some countries who has potential, but there is no real vision or somebody's exploiting them. Nobody can do anything about it. You know, there should be global effort to, you know, boost economies wherever, in whichever countries people can, I guess. So yeah, that was South Sudan by Sam video. Still awesome video. Sam didn't disappoint me yet. This is what 37th or something of the videos I'm reacting to. So that was great. Alright people, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, check out my other reaction. There's a link in the description with all of my videos. And yeah, like I said, like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.